Robert, raise your hand. Can you come up for me for a second? I uh, really <coughs> proud of our team, uh, especially the way they came out and played in the second half. Um, played a little giveaway in the first half and um, got a punt block and gave up a couple explosive plays. And, um, but boy, I tell you, in the second half, I thought our guys did a really, really good job and really proud of the way they came out and played. And it's always a big game, makes a lot of people happy, a lot of Alabama folks happy. We're certainly happy for them. We had a great crowd and a great atmosphere out there. And, I'll certainly thank everyone who contributed to that atmosphere. It was um, great to be a part of. So um, it's a great win for us and you know, for our seniors, really happy for them to uh, their last memory of playing in Bryant Denny Stadium will be you know, one that they can remember uh, in a very positive way and very happy um, for them as well. Um, you know, you accomplished a lot this season. I think the SEC is a very good league. Uh, for the team to go undefeated is quite an accomplishment, um, but it really doesn't mean anything if we can't take advantage of the opportunity that we have, you know, next week in the SEC, SEC championship game. And, you know, obviously Georgia's a very, very good team. So, um, you know, we had a few guys. Um, I think Bugs will be okay. He's got a hyperextended knee, but I think he'll be okay. Um, Jalen Waddle obviously came back and played in a game. Wasn't anything serious with him, so uh, I don't think we have any other issues. Coach, we'll start on the far side with Ben. Uh, two uh, sets of school record for touchdowns today. Was this maybe the most memorable moment of the season for him? Uh, I think we should ask him. You know that. I mean, I, he was happy today that we won the game. Uh, he played a really good game. I think contributed on six scores with I don't know what four or five touchdown passes and. Uh, one run or whatever, so um, and he had a great year for us, and I was happy to see Jalen get in uh, and you know, have a positive play as well. Uh, so, uh, but I thought you know Tua was into it. Uh, he probably did a lot. His leadership was really important, you know, today for our offense. Um, don't ask me why, but it doesn't seem like we had the right kind of energy in the first half. I don't know if it was anxiety or what it was, but uh, we seemed to settle down and play a lot better in the second. Half. Trevor on the left, Michael. Just about the second half, the way Tua came out of uh, the, uh, the halftime, uh, I think 11 for 12 in the second half, just how, how good was he in the second half? Well, he was outstanding, and I think it was really important that we get two big plays, um, start the second half and score, you know, really quickly. Uh, I think that changed the game, you know, quite a bit. Um, and we got a 31-14, so, and he was obviously responsible for both of those explosive plays, one to Jerry Judy and one to Josh Jacobs. So uh, I think that was a real turning point in the game. Back on the right with Charlie. Just want to get your thoughts on Jerry Mayton's targeting penalty and how you thought that Keaton Anderson played in his absence. Uh, I didn't get the second part of the question. How do you thought Keaton Anderson played? Uh, like that? Uh, Keaton did okay. Um, and, you know, I just obviously have to watch the film. There wasn't any, you know, terrible plays uh, or anything like that late in the game. Uh, but, you know, a penalty is a penalty. And he led with his head. And I cannot comment on how much we tell guys they got to see what they hit. They got to keep their face up. You can't lead with your helmet because uh, you don't know what you're going to hit. And if you hit the other guy in the head, you know, that's a problem. And it's dangerous. Um, you know, it's a good player for them. Uh, and you never like to see anybody get hurt, and the rules are really in place to uh, for player safety. And obviously, you know that was not a good judgment. I was one thing I was disappointed about is you know we had to have three or four roughing the passer penalties, most of them on third down. Uh, I didn't see most of them. I'm usually watching the pattern and where the ball's going or how we're covering or whatever it is. So I can't really comment. I'm not trying to comment that they were not good. Um, I'm more disappointed in the judgments and the decisions that our players make um, that puts you in that situation. You can't give other people a new set of downs, you know, three or four times in a game on third down when you get them stopped, you get good pressure on the quarterback. Um, we sacked them once, we got a face mask penalty, gave them a first down. I mean, just um, not, not, not the kind of winning football you want guys to, be, to play. Back on the left with Jeff. Nick, you coached a couple of Heisman Trophy winners, Derrick Henry and, and Mark Ingram, and both of those guys seem to shine in the big moments. Uh, can you talk about Tua and his ability to uh, take advantage 
ways that those opportunities and play well when the stage is big. Well, you, two, two has uh, had an outstanding year for us. He's done a great job. Uh, doesn't seem to ever get flustered in the game. Um, things don't go well. We miss a couple, you know, passes, whatever. Um, we get a little pressure in the pocket. Uh, he always seems to respond exactly like you'd want a quarterback to respond. And uh, he always keeps playing, plays the next play. Uh, he's into it. He's excited about it. He's excited for his teammates. Uh, his leadership is, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, something that I think is really important to, you know, the other players on the team. And I think they have a lot of confidence in him. So, um, you know, you don't get to win a Heisman Trophy. You don't get recognized as being the best performer in anything if you don't have the right stuff. Um, you know, Kobe Bryant get asked, got asked when he was here, what motivates you more? How much you love to win or how much you hate to lose? And he said neither one. I get motivated because I want to be the best player that I can be. And I, I think that, you know, we have some guys on our team and I think two is one of them that uh, he's motivated to be the best player that he can be. And I know he loves to win and I'm sure he hates to lose, but, um, I know that he's always working to try to get better. <laughs> right there. You mentioned the third quarter. When your offense is in such a rhythm like that, and as versatile as you guys can be, and as talented as you guys are, what kind of stress does that put on a defense? And is there any part of you that's glad that you don't have to scheme to stop you guys? Well, we, we play against each other every Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Do you like that challenge? Look, it's our team, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not for the defense. I'm not for the offense. I'm for Alabama. Uh, and I'm for our team. I, and I like when our offensive players make good plays. And I like when our defensive players make good plays. Um, so I'm not rooting for anybody. Um, it helps us get better because I think it challenges you know, the players that we have on both sides of the ball. And I think it helps them all get better. Uh, if you ask a lot of our guys that were on the sidelines today, uh, they play in the NFL now, what, what, what was the best experience that you had here? They would tell you right, that the challenge they had every day in practice was what made them better. And contrary to what people say in recruiting about, you know, you can't play there, the guys that really want to get challenged, they come here and they get better because of it. Jonathan Allen gets better because he plays against Cam Robinson every day. One guy wins the Apple Trophy, the other guy wins the McGurst, they both get better. And so, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm not rooted for both of them. Go to the middle with Rachel. Coach, I have two questions for you. The first is, we've been talking about the second half. Did you see something particularly that you could exploit um, in terms of the adjustments, and what did you say to your team at the half because they did come out fired up? Well, I, 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 I just basically said, that the whole week we've been talking about execution. And everything that we did wrong in the first half led to them scoring or making plays. We got a punt blocked. Uh, we did cover a guy on a throwback uh, pass, a double pass. Um, we had a couple penalties that, you know, contributed to a scoring drive. Uh, we didn't adjust to the Wildcat play that they ran uh, on the goal line. So, we have third and 13, and a guy doesn't cover the back who was assigned to cover the back, and they make a first down that leads to that. So basically it was, I've been talking to you guys all week about how important it is to challenge your energy, control what you can control, and execute. Do your job well, right? and don't make poor emotional decisions. And that's basically what I said. So if we eliminate those things and go out there and execute and do what we're supposed to do, all right, we're going to have a lot of success in the second half. Uh, but we're going to have to change the way these guys think and get after them because now they think they can win. All right, so that was it. Coach, second question here. I was talking to one of your former players, Mike Johnson, earlier this week, and he was talking about just how well you know your players. He said there was a particular meeting or a time when Coach <laughs> called me into his office, and it was almost as if he knew more about me than I knew about myself. It's like he had a notebook about me. And I'm curious, as you went down that line tonight at senior night and you embraced those seniors, right? Was there one particular one that had a story that was so impactful on Alabama football, that was so impactful on you, that stood out? Well, you know, I think the, the number one thing that happens to me when I go down that line is as soon as I see mom and dad, 
and as soon as I see the player, the first thing that pops into my mind is a home visit. I, and it seems like it was just yesterday that we were trying to get the guy to come here, and now he's graduating and playing his last game in, in Bryant Denny Stadium. Um, but probably the unique story was Ross Perfbarker in Iowa. And I go up there with Mario Cristobal, who's from Cuba, and he's <laughs> never been in the snow before. Never been in the snow before. So we get a rental car, and it's snowing like hell now. I mean, it's snowing a little bit, it's snowing a lot, and it's blowing sideways. And I'm saying, Mario, let me drive. <laughs> We got a great player and a great person that has uh, been a great uh, ambassador for the University of Alabama and a great representative for our program. Last one on the back, Brian. Knowing that team's going to build a file on you guys for the course of the season, how pleased are you with the offensive execution at this stage? Well, I mean, I don't think you're ever satisfied. Uh, I think that we're pleased. Uh, that we've been able to score as many points as we have. I think we set a record or whatever. Um, I think, but satisfied, you know, there's always things that you can get better, do better. Uh, and obviously, you know, we didn't play very well last week in the first half. There were some, some things that we didn't do very well today in the first half. We didn't run the ball very effectively in this, this game, which I think we have to have balance um, in our offense. Um, so there, there's always things for us to work on. Uh, am I disappointed in anybody? No. Um, am I pleased that we've been able to accomplish what we have? Yes. But there's many, many things <coughs> that we need to do better on both sides of the ball and special teams. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.